Hi, guys. Whew. Welcome to Bath, Fizz, and Foam. My name is Ron French Smith. It's Monday, so it's time to make something together for Make With Me Monday. So, hi. Welcome. Just going to roll my sleeves up on the new shirt. This is Ugly Bath Bomb Club. How cute is that? Um, yeah. And I also am going to fix my hair. My hair. Put it down lower so I can put this uh, thing on it. But today, we're going to pipe Wonder Bar. I said in the description that it's bubble frosting. And then somebody asked, is it different than Wonder Bar? And no, it's the same thing. It's just that, like, some people don't know what Wonder Bar is. I don't assume that everybody knows what Wonder Bar is. So we're going to pipe Wonder Bar. It's going to be exciting. I have a plan for something I think is going to be really cute. So, <sighs> you know, uh, Jennifer says they just bought the recipe and thanks for the sale. You're so welcome. Uh, it was a flash sale, so it's quick, but I think it's actually still going on. So you can check the link and if it's still going on, you can grab it. Right. I think it's 25% off. That's pretty good. I think all of our recipes are on sale. <sighs> okay. And Holly says, hi. Hi, Holly. <clears throat> okay. So, um, sometimes I master batch Wonder Bar and, uh, and then that's how I make it, but I haven't done it where I like kind of do it from scratch in a while. So I wanted to show, show you guys that. <sighs> So I wanted to show you guys that. It's pretty scratchy. It's like pretty much from scratch, okay? So uh, I have my powdered ingredients laid out and I have my liquid ingredients in here, but I also have cocoa butter and I need to heat this up and melt it. So I'm gonna pop it in the microwave really quick. Really quick, quick. Let's take a big, Unwilling gulp of water. <sighs> okay, so uh, we'll put our powdered ingredients together while that goes. So I have baking soda that I sifted. Um, this is SLSA, so it's a surfactant. So it's going to create the bubbles. You can't have a bubble bar without surfactant. You can have different kinds of surfactant because we're going to use liquid surfactant and powdered surfactant but you have to have a surfactant to have a bubble bar. Otherwise it's not gonna bubble. So I'm gonna put this in here. This is coarse. The recipe says fine, you can use either. You can also, if it doesn't bubble very much, you can actually double the amount that I just put in. It's not gonna like affect it, but I'm only piping like a tiny little swirl on top of some very tiny donuts. So I'm not gonna, worry about doubling the SLSA. I don't think people expect a little tiny dollop of bubble bath to like fill their bathtub with bubbles. It's mostly for decoration, you know, form versus function kind of thing. Okay, we have our SLSA in there. This is cream of tartar. I didn't sift it yet, but we can sift it. You don't have to, but I do think that it helps especially if you have ingredients that are a little bit like more prone to getting little chunks in them. Like see how it has like a couple little chunk chunks. Okay. And then this is probably done. Um, and then in here I have cornstarch and I also have callan clay. Sometimes people ask if they have to use a callan clay. They're like, I don't have it on hand. Can I go without? Um, I have a friend who has never use callan clay in hers. So yes, you can. I think that it helps anchor the fragrance a little bit better. So, you know, that's kind of just kind of up to you whether or not you want to use it. I, I think that it helps anchor the fragrance. So I'm just going to give these powders a little bit of stir. And then I'm gonna combine my liquid ingredients. In here I have vegetable glycerin. I have uh, my fragrance oil. I have 
liquid surfactant, which is cocomidopropyl betaine or cat B. Um, and I have something else that I can't think of off the top of my head. What would it be? I don't know. Maybe there's not anything else. I don't know. I can't think of it. Um, okay. <laughs> but um, just going to put a heat glove on because this little jar is going to be hot. So I'm going to combine these and uh, mix them up so they're all good and making mixed. And then I'm going to add that to my powdered ingredients and then we'll get to stirring. Now, if you have the recipe, it lists um, rubbing alcohol like in the ingredients. And because originally when Amanda made this recipe, she sent it to me as you have it written. OK. And she was like, let's test this. I think this is going to be good. We tested it. We liked it. It worked for us. Then we found out there were all these other things you could do with Wonder Bar. We figured out that you could press it. We figured out that you could scoop it and roll it. And, and we figured out that you could pipe it. Right? Like, you know, it's like a process that we figured all this out. So um, that amount of rubbing alcohol that we have listed is just a suggestion. <laughs> what? Nothing. Nothing to see here. Anyway, <laughs> that amount of rubbing alcohol is just a suggested amount based off our experience. And that's for like, I think it's 50 is what's listed. Um, that's just like, that's just like the base. Okay. We have videos on YouTube that I will say, I, I will send you a link to. No, I will include a link to in the description um, that go over the different textures. But really, that amount of rubbing alcohol is just a suggestion. And instead of like really going by that, I definitely suggest you just kind of visually learn to look for what you want, if that makes sense. So, uh, Holly says, you see here, nothing, nothing happening here, just passing through. Rhonda asks, how do you get the sale price? It should be automatic on the website. Also, if you're a Patreon, uh, as long as the sale's still going. It was supposed to end at midnight, but when I checked earlier today, it was still on, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't make the rules. I just, I'm here to be cute. Um, also, though, if you have Patreon, don't forget you can use your Patreon code uh, the bonus tier gets 15% off and the, uh, like regular tier, the basic tier gets 10% off. So don't forget that. Okay. So I'm going to take this off now that we've gotten going for a minute. I'm going to give this a little scrape. Just to make sure we're getting everything mixed until it's kind of stuck on the sides. Some of the liquids would kind of get stuck. And then we're going to start adding our rubbing alcohol. Now, I would say if you're following the recipe and you have to put in like twice what we recommend for each different level, right? you might and, and or you live in a dry climate okay like right now my humidity is 41 percent. i don't know how that happened oh i had my dehumidifier all night to dry these bath bombs but um okay so my humidity is low right so if i feel like i'm having to add like a ton of rubbing alcohol and it's still dry and it's still coming out crumbly and it's just not working for me we have had our uh, customers who have used this in drier climates tell us that when they add about five extra grams of glycerin, which is like a really small amount, right? That little tiny extra bit makes enough of a difference so that they don't have to add as much rubbing alcohol. And um, the rubbing alcohol is gonna evaporate out. 
so the fragrance isn't going to stay. I'm trying to cover all my bases here, you know? I'm trying to make sure I get everything covered. Cool. Right? Did I, oh, okay. And we need piping bags. Because we're going to pipe this today. Also, you know, give your Wonder Bar time to mix. There's like magic happening. As these ingredients are mixing together, there's like some magic-y magic happening. Okay, so let them do their thing. Um, the, the thing we're gonna pipe on today are these little tiny donuts. It's so annoying though. You know, that's the thing. It's so annoying to listen to it. Um, okay, so I made these donuts. Now, normally when you do two colors, you get like one side that's really clean and then this is the bottom. You get the bottom that's like less clean looking, but I want to make some little monsters. I I am pretty much done with everything I need to make for Halloween, but I'm just, I can't let go of Halloween. I just can't let go of it. So um, I liked kind of the funky look inside so I could have like kind of monstery looking things. So what I'm thinking is, I'm thinking the bottom part, we're going to use like maybe this closed star tip, which is an Ateco 843. Mm -hmm. uh, use a closed star tip, do a little dollop on top. Then they just flew up and hit me. Then put an eyeball on the dollop. Hmm. Then I don't know if we're going to get this done, but I also have a grass tip and I was thinking about making it look like hair. I have two grass tips. I might do the bigger grass tip. Anyway, making it look like hair. So pink and then purple hair. And then it's like kind of a little monster. And then maybe later I'll paint like a little smile on it. On it right? Just like a cute little, I don't know. I just want to try. I just want to try it. Okay. That's my plan. No. Let's see if it, uh, we'll see what happens though. <laughs> you never know. Okay. So to color the batch, um, I'm going to start with some red 27 Lake, but I'm also going to use some mica. So, um, red 27 Lake, red 28 dye, they're going to fade. So I'm going to add a little bit of mica to it to kind of like hold that color a little bit better. It's like color insurance kind of. Anyway, that's what we're going to do. That's the plan, man. And we're going to color the whole batch because we can go from pink to purple. So we can color the whole batch pink. And then when we get to color the purple part, we can color that. So that was about uh, a quarter teaspoon of red 27. We can add more if we need to, but you can't take it away. So, you know, start small, work your way up. A little goes a long way. Uh, somebody said, and it scrolled up so fast. That's a great idea, little monsters. And then on YouTube, I see, I don't know, Facebook. We have it going on YouTube too. Okay, but, um, and Amber said that they made it and it's actually a great idea because the rubbing alcohol, <laughs> they, they think that the rubbing alcohol smells really bad. I don't notice it. Like I'm super sensitive to smells and I don't really notice it, but some people like say that it's terrible for them. So it's just like kind of an interesting phenomenon. I don't know why for some people it's like so strong because it'll evaporate what and like that's how you know that your winter bar is dry is that it's not putting off that rubbing alcohol smell anymore so i don't know why for some people it's like really really strong um but for me it's just not which is weird because i tend to be very sensitive to smell like i get so ticked off when my husband <laughs> like starts cleaning and like i can smell the cleaner I don't know. It's like I need to be warned or something. Tristan says, how long before lakes start to fade? Um, depends on the lake. Red 27 is going to fade the fastest. Um, 
but they're all colorants are going to fade eventually. Even honestly, mica will eventually fade. Um, so red 27 is the fastest and it depends on if it's out in the sunlight. I don't really know. I can't really say, but it, it will fade. But a lot of times, like I just go with it. I don't really like stress over it too much, you know? Um, okay. Leia says uh, they'll come back for the replay. Okay, cool. See you later. Uh, <laughs> Jamie says, uh, since the cold video is running that the alcohol smells different and it's awful. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, it's really, it's very interesting to us because we've had some people who say that it's like overwhelming and they really don't like it. For us, we can't. I can't smell it when it's done. Um, all I smell is the fragrance oil. So if though, if that is like overwhelming, you don't like it, um, you can try just adding a little bit more glycerin to the batch and um, and then you'll probably have to use less of the rubbing alcohol. So, okay, so I'm just like, I'm not even, I mean, I'm weighing it for you guys because you're gonna ask like how much I use but I'm not really like paying that close attention. I'm just looking for the texture. So right now this texture, I have 62 grams in right now and hopefully my scale doesn't like bail on me and like turn off on its random own because they do that. Um, but this texture right here, it's like crumbly. Um, I would say that this would be a good texture for, it's a little bit wet, well, so basically, like, it's holding together into a clump when I let go, but it is kind of sticking to my glove. So this is a little bit past what I would use for pressing texture. Um, it might be a good scooping texture. This is, again, 62 grams for me. Um, it might be a good scooping texture. It's a little too dry to for rolling texture, like if you're going to roll bubble rolls. But... Um, Basically, we really like to encourage you to look for the texture instead of like a set amount of rubbing alcohol because it's really going to change depending on your humidity, which is also going to change from day to day. So Catherine says that they don't smell the rubbing alcohol either. Like it's really, it's so strange to me. I don't know why there's a difference. Um, like we've asked, like I'm using 91%. Isopropyl alcohol, I've used 95 and I've used 99 and it just like, so I don't know. I don't know what to tell people. Uh, Nectaria says that they made it. They're late, but they made it. Well, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. Okay, so I haven't, I still haven't added any more rubbing alcohol, but you can see over here that as I'm letting it mix, which I think is another key thing, is just like giving it time to mix. It's starting to clump into clumps. Um, it's not sticking to the side. It is still kind of sticking to my glove though. So, you know, it's just, it's forming. You can also master batch this and we do have a blog post on that. And I think we have a YouTube video on it. I don't know. It's like, I'm the one that makes the YouTube videos, but then I'm not responsible for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not me. Uh, I can't do the math on this, so I'm going to write it down so we can remember it later. 62 grams is what we had. Then my scale turned off. Of course it did. Um, so right now, we're going to get it past the mashed potato stage. And if you've watched enough, we're not there yet, so we can't say it yet, but if you've watched enough of these, you know what I'm going to say. I'm going to say... When we get there, that mashed potatoes are bad. I mean, I personally like mashed potatoes, but in this instance, okay. So a lot of people, <laughs> oh no. Are you angry with me for like dumping things down into this? <laughs> Let go. I think it's angry with me because I dumped, oh, I don't know, like a bunch of stuff down into that little, 
I mean, I didn't dump it, but a bunch of stuff fell down into that little hole. And it's probably like caked in there now, and I'm gonna have to like take the whole thing apart to get it out. Anyway, it's kind of angry with me, is my point. Um, okay, so we have 41 more grams of rubbing alcohol that we've added. I can add that to 62 in my head, thankfully. So that's uh, 43, 46, 103 grams. Okay. So a lot of people that would look at this because I'm like, you know, get it to the point where it looks like frosting. And they're like, that looks like frosting. But does it look like frosting? You got to ask yourself, does this look like frosting? Or does it perhaps, if it wasn't pink, does it perhaps look like mashed potatoes? Hmm. Mashed potatoes are bad. We don't want mashed potatoes. Okay. We want it to when we run our spatula through it we want the frosting to like glide through we want it to scoop it and it just goes bloop and it plops off okay that's what we're looking for also now i gotta put you out. okay i'm sorry darling don't give up okay that turned off again so i'm just gonna go right here and keep doing our total okay so we're gonna keep going that was my point and while this next little bit mixes, I'm going to get my piping bags ready. Because we're close. And that's cute. So I could use a coupler if I wanted to, like, change colors. But I don't want to do that. I had couplers pulled out of a while. I'm not going to use those. Okay. And um, we're going to use the Sateco 843 tip. Looking good. Looking good. Okay. So I'm going to put about, I don't know how much that was because apparently I didn't turn my scale. Slightly over a hundred grams is what I use. So, um, ooh, okay. If, come on. I'm sorry, Mixie. I didn't do it. Oh, God, she's mad. She's mad. I didn't do it on purpose, okay? And I promise my table's clean. I cleaned everything beforehand. That's like part of the process. Okay. okay. We have our mixing bag. And this one is joke. Okay. When I'm putting my my beater through it it's just like going straight through it if i try to pick if i try to pick some up with my spatula hmm still kind of sticking to my spatula so maybe just a tainty tiny bit more i want it to just pop right off that spatula and i promise you it is People usually, they're like, what they're afraid of is they're afraid they're going to add too much of rubbing alcohol. I promise you, it is so hard to do that. It is so, so hard to do that. You can do it. I have done it. But you really like, there's a good amount of warning signs before you get to that point. Okay? So... It's, it's a lot. It's very hard to do that. Okay, I'm just going to show you right here. Okay, it's like plopping off now, okay? There's a lot of warning signs before you get to that point. Um, so it's very hard to add too much. I think, you know, if you're using a tiny batch, it's easy to add too much. Like if you're trying to like do a quarter size batch or something like that. I, that's And that's usually the time I've done it. But I've tried to turn it into a slurry before because I was like, oh, maybe I could use this as like a as like a drizzle or a frosting like I thought that at one point because I was like, it can do all these other things. You can press it. You can pipe it. You can scoop it. You can roll it. Maybe you could use it as a drizzle. I thought to myself. You can't. You can't, though. So it's you just can't, you know. And I, try, I added so much when, uh, rubbing alcohol trying to get it to that point, and I couldn't do it, so. 
I left some in that bowl. We might need it. We might not need it. I don't want to color it yet until we know for sure, but we'll color that portion purple. Okay. So I'm, I, what I want is that when I squeeze the bag, it just comes like right to the tip. I'm not having to like squeeze. I'm not going to pop the bag. There's like no concerns that I'm going to pop the bag. Like that's what you really want. I'm also going to lightly spray these bath bombs with 91% rubbing alcohol. That's going to help the Wonder Bar stick to the um, donuts. And we're going to pipe one. And then we're going to come down here so you can see over here. You guys are good. Okay, we're going to stick this right on there. Now, I don't know. I haven't, like, tried it yet. So maybe I should do, like, I haven't tried it. We're just, we're learning together, okay? That's cute as it is. That's cute as it is. We could also try to do this. Right? Now it's more like an eye, okay? And then I, I'm i going to try to put the grass on it, grass tip. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but I want to try. It's worth a try, okay? Do we, <laughs> do we like it with the, with the stuff around the eye? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Um, if you're trying to put your toys on and they are, like, not sticking, you could try rubbing the toy with some uh, rubbing alcohol before you put it on. But for the most part, once you shrink wrap it, it'll help hold them onto the bar. You definitely, though, want to um, be piping and putting the toy. Don't, like, pipe – well – don't like pipe everything and then try to add the toys. That's um, they're going to like dry out between between each placement. And then it is going to be harder to get the toy to stick. And these are just eyeballs I got at the dollar store. <laughs> like, You know. But it should be piping this easy. Like it should be. You should have those really beautiful lines. There's no cracking. There's no uh, like ribboning effect where if, if it's cracking or the, the frosting is like creating like, do you know what I mean when I'm saying that it's ribboning? Like if it's cracking as you're piping it and it's not coming out as like a smooth line like that, you just, you need to add more rubbing alcohol if you don't want to do that, then, you know, you could try adding about five grams of glycerin and just mix it really well. But just also know that the longer time that it mixes, it's drying as it's mixing. So there is also that. Okay. I don't know about, I'm going to prep some purple. I'm going to pull some pink out. Just in case I decide I do want to go over the top, but then I'm going to prep some purple and try that purple one. I don't know. In my head, I could see it with like hair all over it, but maybe that's not, maybe that's not the way, you know, I don't have the Mandalorian here to tell me, so I don't know. But it, it really should, I'm just going to get like a tiny bit more because I have piping left in the bag, but it's like, you know, I just want to get that smooth. I want to be a smooth operator. How long before it dries, please, Lisa asks. So that really depends on your humidity. If you're using a dehumidifier in your drying area and stuff like that. Um, for me, it would take with my, if my humidity is high, it could take up to a week. If my humidity is low, it could take three or four days. So, I mean, I've had like when my humidity was like really high and I wasn't running a dehumidifier, it took like maybe like a full week. Um, but 
that's one of the things that I love about Wonder Bar. So when, after we had our very first boot camp, um, we did like a bunch of bubble bar projects. And I mentioned to Amanda after the live, so I have some pink here reserved. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a chance and hope that the purple is the way to go. Um, but I messaged Amanda afterwards and we were talking about it and I was like, that was awesome, that was fun. Um, but you know, those bubble bars are never gonna dry for me. <laughs> They're just never gonna dry. I've never had a bubble bar that dries because in the original boot camp we were using the recipes from Fun in the Tub, which is Amanda's um, book. And it has a really good bubble bar recipe in it, but it just didn't work for me in my humidity. They just would never dry. Like I would leave them for a month. <laughs> It just never dried. So, um, you know, I told her, I was like, that's cool. Just, you know, just FYI, they're not going to dry for me. And she was like, are you serious? That's, that's not acceptable. <laughs> and so she created Wonder Bar and it dry, it dries so hard for me. Um, I can package them in shrink wrap. Now your expectation of what a hard quote unquote bubble bar is versus my expectation may be very different. I will say that the the frosting is going to be more delicate. So if I push my finger into it, like yes, it's going to break. But the scoops, hold on, I have a scoop. So you know also like don't do that. <laughs> I mean, sometimes people will be like, why are, why are my things doing this? I'm like crushing it and it's being crushed. And I'm like, don't crush it. <laughs> like, I mean, I understand it. Like you want it to be sturdy. You want it to be able to be shrink wrapped and you want it to stand up to the little children that are at the market unsupervised and touching everything with their snotty fingers. Like I totally understand that. Um, but also, you know, there is going to be some intrinsic fragility in these items. So I'm also going to add some, hold on, just to protect the color of this purple, because I also don't want it to fade. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of purple like that and let that mix. And I do want this to be very loose. So I'm adding a little bit more right now. Anyway, so here is a bubble scoop. I mean, it got a little dented when I did that, but it's okay, right? So, like, it's pretty sturdy is all I'm saying. And this will dry hard enough to shrink wrap. I wouldn't take the frosting and do that with it because it would probably break it. But, you know, I think sometimes we have to temper our expectations. If you want, if you're still out there looking for the perfect bar and Wonder Bar is not it for you, that's okay. I'm just saying, like, I've had to learn in life that sometimes, you know, sometimes <laughs> I'm looking for a unicorn, you know, and it's like, maybe it doesn't exist. <laughs> anyway, it's just, to me, it's as perfect as it gets. We love it. Uh, it's why we, like, it's literally the foundation of, like, what we do. We love this recipe so much that, like, we built bathism foam because we love this recipe so much. So, just saying. I have decided I'm going to use the small grass tip because I have less frosting. Um, if I use the big grass tip, then I lose a bunch of frosting in there. So, I lose, like, dexterity over how much can come out. So I'm going to use the tiny grass tip, which is an Ateco, Jesus, one, three, three. <laughs> I can barely read it. I don't know. <sighs> okay, hmm, it turned itself around. It's breach. Come back here. Yeah. Stop turning around, little child. Okay, okay, okay. Come on, come on. You're almost there. There we go. Almost there. Okay. So I'm going to cut this piping tip. No, not this tip. I'm going to cut this piping bag. Okay. And we're going to make some grass. What size bubble scoop containers do you get? Um, I don't know. I can post the link. I'll go find them on my Amazon. 
there's they're basically called i think they're called mooncake domes something like that um i would just suggest i got them from amazon so i would just suggest if you get i've gotten a couple and like the very first ones i got they didn't close like they kept popping open so i would suggest going through and making sure that you're reading the reviews on on anything you get from amazon okay first off and secondly make sure that you filter it by most recent reviews because amazon loves to put the top reviews like the highest rated reviews at the top so you only see good things which i'm like whoa that's some real transparency i appreciate that okay <laughs> I love this so much. I don't know. I can't tell you right now, looking at this, that it's going to survive being shrink wrapped. I can't promise that. Do I care in this moment right now? No, because I'm getting to do what I want to do, which is make something real cute with a little hair, purple things coming off of it. It's making me happy. And I decided a long time ago that I was going to make the products that made me happy. So I'm just filling in. <laughs> okay. I don't know why that makes me so happy, but it does. But so your Wonder Bar should be able to be piped. Like if it can't do this, then you probably need some more rubbing alcohol. That's all I'm saying, okay? It, it's able to do this. So if you're like squeezing the bag and uh, having a really hard time getting it out, then, you know, you might need to just kind of go in and like, all right, let's see on the back. I'm going to do like the grass like this on the back. That's good. Yeah, I don't have to like spend my whole life doing that. <laughs> it's so bizarre. I don't know. I really like it though, okay? Don't judge me. Or you can. I don't care. Your opinion of me is not my business whatsoever, actually. And that's a very freeing thing. Now this piping tip sucks. So she's not that great. She's kind of squirting it out. It looks like little poop, purple poops. And now she only has frosting coming out of like one thing. So I will probably, this is what I'm gonna do. Okay. I'm gonna just scoot it down a little bit, cut this tip and put the big tip in that I didn't wanna use. But who's faithful to me that little one's a little Judas Iscariot, it's what it is. Well, well, Judas betraying me over there. Fine. Fine. We'll just replace you, baby. Zero hesitation. <laughs> you're not with me, you're against me, little piping tip. Mm. That's how it is. Okay. And then I'm just going to stick this bag right inside here because i'm not trying to squeeze that all out and start over again nope no man oh see now she knows how to do it she's just popping them out i don't know why this makes me so okay you should have it should be able to come out like that though okay cool anyway so uh yeah what have you guys been working on? Um, you can tell me. If you have questions about Wonder Bar, you can ask. If I don't see it, I'll like go back later and answer your questions. <gasps> see how cute it is? YouTube, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Maybe she doesn't need a mouth. You know what I did think about doing? And I was this, I was like thinking about it last night. And I was like, you know what? I just need to use what I have because I already have these eyeballs. But I was thinking about going to the dollar store. And, you know, they have, like, the little skeleton 
garland or whatever. I thought about taking those and taking the arms off of them and adding two little like random arms popping out of here <laughs> because I found this here. I'll show you what I'm doing so you can see. I found these like, <laughs> I found these skeleton arms and they're apparently tongs for your bowl. And I really want to make like a video where I'm like making bath bombs with them. Anyway. Part, like we put up our Halloween decorations yesterday and probably seven years ago or so my son and my older son, my husband and I were in a store. I'm not going to say where. Okay. Cause I don't know if the statute of limitations is passed. Okay. We were in a store and there was a mannequin arm sitting on the ground. And I was like, I want it. I want it. I want it. And they were like, I was like, get the arm, get the arm. <laughs> so they, you know what? I love them. They got the arm for me. And so we use that arm every Halloween. We, uh, it's like we put blood all over it and then we stick it in the ground and then we have like a graveyard in our front yard. And then we have that arm coming out of the graveyard. And over the years we have collected, uh, we have another hand, we have another foot. We have collected several body parts to go along with our arm, but that arm started it all, you know? <laughs> They're so cute, right? <laughs> Just a little monster, just a little monster, okay? It almost looks like eyelash. I don't know what I'm going to do about that one. I might scrape that layer off that I put on her. So I will have a little bit of frosting left. And the question is always, what do you do with your extra frosting? Or if you have a batch that gets ruined, what do you do with that batch uh do you, you know you throw it away because you're angry and you're and you get angry at us because you're like these are expensive ingredients and you led me wrong and i'm like <laughs> sorry uh don't throw it away okay if your recipe goes wrong if things don't turn out the way you expected them to if it's too dry if it's too runny if any of that stuff happens just set your wonder bar aside um, and you have a few options you can let it dry out all the way if you want to, like you can just let it air dry all the way um, or you can put it into a container and try to preserve as much of the rubbing alcohol in it as you can. I just typically let it dry out all the way, but I have literally been so lazy that I just left it in the piping bag <laughs> and then came back and react. You can basically rebatch it. So you just and we've done a few blog posts and we've had a couple blog posts featured recently of showing like how you can rebatch it but yeah you basically just stick it back in your mixer add more rubbing alcohol and go you know and sometimes it helps if you sift it like if you put it through a sifter because if it's like chunky it might be a little bit hard to um <clears throat> if, if it's well okay lot happening in here if it's chunky it might be hard for it to get smooth looking in your mix you know um so you might want to put it through like a sifter or something like that but then you can just reuse it so don't throw it away if things don't go the way expected the first time which let's face it there's always a learning curve with anything so while i'm always really happy for the people who say this is the first time i made it and i was successful also realize that like that's not normal. Like we all, all, all of us everywhere, whenever we're trying anything new, even if you're a master at your craft, if you're trying something new, there's going to be a learning curve. So you might not nail it the first time. And if not, it's okay. She has a little cowlick over there. They, I'm sorry. I don't want to assume. They have a little cowlick over there. So yeah, there might be a learning curve. So don't, if you, if it doesn't work out the way you want it to, don't throw it away. Um, like, this, for example, batch or this um, stuff right here, 
um, the pink that I didn't end up finishing using, I could pipe it into this bag. Oh, and you can see, let me show you this because it's, what do I have? What do I have? I have my hand. Okay. No, it's not doing it. Okay. It's doing it in here though. Let me take out a scoop from here. This, how it's all cracked and, and funky. It's like not smooth how it's coming out. It's because it's drying out, right? So if that's what it's looking like when you're piping it, just add more rubbing alcohol. But anyway, I'm going to add this into this container. Uh, so it's just a little food storage container. I'll put a lid on it and I can rebatch it and reuse it whenever I want. I could turn it into bubble scoops. I could turn it into bubble rolls. I could just need a little bit of frosting for a project and I could have it right there. So anyway, that's pretty much it. I got some, I got a little purple left maybe. That's pretty much it. So yeah, there's some purple in there. So yeah. Wonder Bar. It's awesome. We love it. It's so cute. It you can do so much with it. Look how cute those are. Look how cute yours are. Um uh, okay, so um, Robin said that you made a batch last night and it was heavy in sinking and you think it was too wet. That sounds like a bath bomb. So this is this is Wonder Bar. Um, it's going to make bubbles. So it's like a bubble frosting. You could use uh, Lush. Lush has a pat patent copyright on the uh, the word bubble bar. So you can't call them a bubble bar, but you can call them bubble frosting. You can call them bubble scoops. You can call them bubble cakes. You can call them bubble dust. You can call it bubbling bath dust. You can call it bubbling solid bubble bath. Like there, you can literally call it anything on the planet, just as long as you don't call it bubble bar. Um, so what you would do would be, where's my poor scoop that I've been abusing. Um, you can take your scoop and we have also, we have videos on this, but you can chop it up um, put it in a bubble basket, put it in a sieve, or just hold it under the running water, and it's going to create bubbles in your bath. And then it's like a bubble bath. <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, you just don't just, like, throw it in. Because if you just throw it in, it's not going to do anything. It'd be boring. Um, anyway, oh, Robin says it was Wonder Bar. Yeah, so... That's, yeah, you have to you have to put it... You have to hold it under running water. You can't just put it in the tub. It's not going to do anything. It is going to sink. Um, it's not going to do any, it's like, imagine when you use liquid bubble bath, if your bath bomb is, if, if your bath, when you use liquid bubble bath, if your water is still, you've already filled up the tub and the water is still, and you try to add liquid bubble bath to it, what's going to happen? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. It's not going to create bubbles because it needs that agitation. Same thing for bubble bars. Um, you would just, you know, hold it under the running water. It's just, you know, it involves a little bit more effort because you can't just pour it into the running water but you would hold it under the running water and then you would get your bubbles that way so anyway guys if you have any questions you can ask them on facebook or youtube i will come back and answer them and i will include links in the description of both where you can find uh this recipe the colors that i used uh what else what else oh um this mold that i used today um cater molds actually gave me a bunch of molds for uh, when I was teaching at the HSCG conference, and I have a bunch of them still. Um, and I give I've given molds away ton tons of times, but um, that's the donut size that I use today. It's a really cute little size. I think feel like it's a good starter size. Um, so on Patreon, I'm going to be giving away five of these. So if you're one of our Patreon people, uh, stay tuned. I'll be giving away five of these and I will uh, send them to you. And then if you um, are international, I'll split the shipping with you. Okay. Uh, domestic, well, I, we got the shipping, but international, I'll split it with you. Um, and uh, that's it. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Uh, it was awesome. I love you guys. You're the best. Happy making.